there was, well, there was uh, 24 regiments of us, and in March of uh, 1865, we were larger than the Army of the Potomac. There were 60,000 of us and 1,100 officers. And what's your name? My name is Walter Bosch. Gugor, Headquarters Battalion, 2nd Divi Division, 1st first, first Division, 2nd Corps. That's what I do, and that's what I'll be doing today. I'll be sounding taps. Sounding taps? Mm hmm And what regime are you representing? Say again? Who are you representing with the regime? Uh, actually, uh, 26 of my ancestors fought in the Civil War. 25 on the Union side, one on the Confederate side. And most of them were right here from Philadelphia. Statue of Liberty, boy, that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Get a baiting way to come down here. Okay. Go across here. That's it. Oh, the wind here comes here. Oh, nice. Oh, 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 Whatever you whatever you produce, I'll have to see it. It's big horse is a nice big cemetery. Yeah. I I put the script horse in the I think it's a good thing. You gotta see it back with one day. Yeah. Mr. Willis. Yes. Come forward, sir. Any loud, please. Any loud. Liberty. Hi, how are you? Oh, you know what? Anywhere you want to go. <laughs> Come forward, please, and uh, uh, civilians, come here. Uh, Attire civilians, please. And citizens, veterans, please come forward. Maybe we'll create some work. Gather round. If meat ever came back, he'd be out of a job.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to our 22nd annual observance of the birth of General George G. Meade and also his wedding anniversary, as I mentioned before. This is his 197th birthday. So we're coming up on a big one in, th in uh, 2015, which is also coincides with the end of the Civil War. General Meade was born in Cadiz or Cadiz, Spain, a place that Captain Lieberman knows well. He was stationed there during the Civil War. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, actually served uh, there. And uh, so, why is he Spanish? No, his parent, his father, was a diplomat representing the United States government. So he, though born on foreign soil, he was indeed an American citizen. I'd like to point out. The uh, sponsors, we have a number of co-sponsors. We couldn't do this event without the support of many, many groups and individuals and institutions. And uh, the, uh, the first one would be one near and dear to my heart, to many of you, is the General Mead Society. Huzzah! 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 Which was founded at this very day uh, and this site uh, 16 years ago. Pardon me. Uh, and uh, we'd already been doing the ceremony for a number of years when uh, several individuals uh, had, uh, recommended that we form a, a formal organization to continue that, and we did. I do see a number of charter members of that group here. I saw Hugh Boyle. I saw my lovely wife, Carol Newman. I see Jane Peters Estes here. Uh, any other, ah, Herb Kaufman, any other charter members of that group? Your your dues are uh, in arrear. <laughs> we also have the backing of the Friends of Laurel Hill Cemetery. And I'd like to uh, ask the president, uh, Carol Yaster, to come forward and bring greetings for this very, very important organization that does so much to preserve the history and interpret the history of, of Laurel Hill. I think the guitar didn't work. That's okay. That's okay. I, <laughs> right, we need I, another will, one. I will project. I'm not Please quite project. as good at it as Andy at projecting, but I will do the best I can. I want to welcome all of you here to Laurel Hill Cemetery, and I want to acknowledge our ultimate volunteer, Pete Hoskins. There's Pete. All right. I know he is the president of the cemetery company, the CEO, and he's also the executive director of the Friends. Uh, I want to wish all of you a happy and healthy new year. Hopefully we will all be back together next year. And uh, I know that Russ Dodge wanted to say something. Uh, come I'm gonna, on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on him. I got him. Okay, yeah. he's there. Uh, yeah. Do, you want him now? All right, let's do it now. Oh, you can do it later. <laughs> you can do it you can do it. Come forward, come forward. Russ Dodge is the ultimate uh, cemetery uh, historian. And we, he's a member of the Mead Society and also the Friends, and we count him. Uh, as a valuable asset. Also, administrator of findagrave.com. Yes. So if you have a gripe about find a grave, come to me and I'll ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I've been researching the veterans in the cemetery about four years now. We have identified over 1,200 veterans of all different wars, from French and Indian War to the Vietnam War. And it's uh, amazing how many of them, their stories, are only known by their names and their dates. And every year we come here for the uh, Meat Society, the uh, quote the uh, Memorial Day, and today to honor the veterans. And there's been one veteran near General, uh, buried near General Meade that people stand around but not really don't know anything about it. The great site is right over there. That little obelisk right there. That's Second Lieutenant Evan W. Grubb. Second Lieutenant Every W. Grubb was in the 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry, and the 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry fought at the Battle of Murfreesboro, which was December 31st, January 1st, and January 2nd. Lieutenant Grubb died 150 years ago today, killed in action at the Battle of Murfreesboro. So I would like to at least have a little moment of silence or, or an honor of one of the veterans of the cemetery who is always have people around him for a ceremony for John Meade 
and just a little recognition for him for giving his life 150 years ago today. So it's a good little cheer for him. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, what, I, what I would add to that is uh, he was killed in the famous charge of the 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry into a line of Confederate infantry. infantry yep. And there, uh, there are other men in this cemetery, including his commander, who are also buried here. Major Rosengarten. And that is Adolf Rosengarten, Major Rosengarten, also killed on that same day, yep. and others as well. So we, we honor them as well as Evan Evan Grubb. Thank you very much, yep. Ross. I appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. Was here. Also, Major we have yeah. representatives of the Sons of Union Veterans, Camp Number 1, named for Anna M. Ross. Uh, do you have your is your camp commander or your senior vice? Your senior vice. Please step forward, uh, John John Green, and bring greetings from the camp. On behalf of Van Amaros Camp Number One, just like to wish everybody a happy New Year and uh, happy birthday, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. The uh, sons and other heritage groups are uh, descendants. Many of them descendants, original descendants, or as a direct descendants of the actual veterans themselves or associates and we're happy to have them we have other camps here including camp 299 and i know we have the commander of camp 299 right here, here in the very person of general john gibbon yes john, What's up? and give uh, greetings What's sir up? yes on behalf of camp 299 and also the confederation of union generals sir. yes sir and also the gettysburg battlefield preservation association yes sir our compliments, and we wish General Meade a very happy birthday, and many more of them, too. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> and that is Bob Hanrahan, who, in his real guise, is a true uh, preservationist historian and supporter of, of, uh, of many of these causes, and we thank you, sir. Also, Camp 101, the Baker Fisher Camp. Are you the post commander, camp commander? Please step forward, sir. Want me to address it as the Meade Society? Or? Well, uh, let's do both. <coughs> this, is all, this is Mike Peter. He is the uh, Vice President of the Meade Society and also Camp Commander. I'd just like to wish everybody a Happy New Year. It's fantastic to see everybody out here. As we go through the new year, please keep in mind the men and women that are fighting on the front lines for our freedom today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And we also have American Legion Post Benjamin Franklin, American Legion Post, 405 of the Union League. And we're privileged. We have a number of members here, including myself. And uh, but uh, we better than that, we have our camp. Po pardon me, post commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel retired, blissfully retired, John Peterson. John, please come forward. Give us greetings. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Post 405, the Benjamin Franklin Post, and the uh, Armed Services Council of the Union League, I'd like to welcome you here. And we'd like to wish uh, General Meade a, a very happy birthday. I want to say one thing. If you are older than 24 years old, then 10% of your, or your life represents 10% of the life of our country. So if you think that, you know, these people are great and they've made a great contribution to our nation, what can I do? You've got a, a lot more to go. And the fact that you're here is certainly demonstrating that you have a desire to do something for your country and remember those who have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commander. Thank you, Commander Peterson. Also, we have, uh, and uh, by the way, we would also extend greetings to all veterans that are here today, uh, whether you're a member of, of uh, a Legion Post, the VFW Post, or other groups, or, or just an individual. Uh, veteran, we bring greetings to you and thank you for your service. Also, we have the President of the Grand Army of the Republic Civil War Museum and Library here, Hugh Boyle. He's also an Army veteran. Would you step forward and bring greetings, sir? <coughs> President Hugh Boyle. Thank you, Andy. I just want to say... By the way, you don't have champagne yet, I hope. Not yet. Oh, good. I'm okay. Ready. Ready. <laughs> ready. <laughs> prepared. Prepared. This is always the right thing. But I want to thank everybody for being here because the mate, uh, one of the most important things that we have and we at the museum and all of you people here are hard designed to remember the courage of those who fought in that war and especially for General Meade. So thank you all for being here. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for all of us. Thank you, Hugh. I put you on the spot. I didn't warn you. Thank you. He's, by the way, he's also the <laughs> president of the Delaware Valley Civil War Roundtable. I know there are many Civil War Roundtables and other kinds of groups, historical groups here, but if we keep going here, we're all going to be frozen before we get to the champagne. <laughs> so I will thank all of you uh, in, in, a, in a